We're going to actually film it this time so we can put it up on the internet and I don't have to do it again. Ha ha! So, here is. Um, okay, too many times when you see people when they are drawing horses, they look like Josh Whedon's bad horse, you know what I mean? They, they kind of do a, a round head that's kind of human. They stick some eyeballs here on the front because horses don't have eyeballs here. They have them on the side. And they do these weird looking noses that are kind of medieval. And then they have the jaw fall down like this. And then the face stays the same size. They kind of stick the ears on any old way. Um, the neck's kind of connect, kind of human. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to draw better than they can because I automatically do. Um, they give kind of a greyhoundy back. There's too much knee. They always forget the fetlocks, that kind of thing. You know, I mean, you all all seen these terrible horses. They give human muscles here. They all have the same muscle groups, but they're just not organized the same way. Okay, so um, so if you uh, this is kind of just my guide for me to draw the different parts of the horse down here, the horse that I was doing here. A lot of people, I want to show you my books real quick that I got. A lot of people think about Sam Savitt. This is one of my favorite horse books, if you can find it or anybody buy him. It's Paul Brown, and he does the most fabulous pencil horses and has studied their movements, okay? So the um, Paul Brown is excellent. He really has those movements down. Not so great on people and things, but he does horses beautifully. Okay, this is an example of somebody who is a complete amateur artist, but this man grew up, Glenn Rounds was around horses, all right? So even though his horses are quite, uh, you know, handmade, they are still very good versions of horses. Okay? There's all kinds of wonderful horse books, and, and take a look at the good ones, the Book of Cowboys, The Color of Horses, okay? So, this is a perlative horse if you can find it. There's more copies of those out there now. Um, so you see what I mean about you've seen too many horses that look like this in comic books and animation and they have this weird piece of hair stuck on tail that doesn't work, right? You know, obviously. Um, now, one of the main things about the horse's head is the way the jaw works. And Roberta has very nicely brought in this poor little filly here who was shot through the head. I'll be to, I'll okay. be to and please demonstrate the jaw working. I'll be the, I'll be the puppet, puppet And you see the jaw working. Okay, so when you see this jaw work, you'll have the head like this. Hi, I'm Mr. Ed. And this is Mr. Ed. And that's a female because she has no wolf teeth. Yep. Okay, and uh, she was shot through the head, obviously. Okay, and the eye, the eyes on the side here, there's a mm -hmm. little good place to shoot a horse right there. Don't ask. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and so you got your big jaw here, okay, and this kind of bone comes in here. All right, but when a horse opens its mouth, all right, the nostrils get folded back, and you can even have folding back on the jaw, and the jaw comes open like this. In other words, the whole jaw opens up, right? So you get this kind of weird look here, and often when they do, the eye bulges and the eye goes back down here, and you get like a blackness here. And you'll start seeing the gums and things. This is, we'll make it a stallion, we'll put a wolf deal in there. That's really too big, but you know. He's in a mood. You see what I mean? But you see how that works. You get the whole jaw opens up. It becomes square-like, and the muscle and the and, the, uh, and all that soft muzzle kind of goes up here. You ever see a horse like that? Just leave. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, they can hurt you. This one, of course. Uh, this is a, it's a much better quick sketch, and I'm going to save this one for Linda to ink tomorrow. How's that? Yeah. You'll be the inky one. And this one, as you can see, rather than having that jaw just fall open like this, the entire jaw has opened up. Uh, he has got his nostrils flared, those ears are back, they have kind of a cup-like situation here like we have here, and the ears are actually quite much more stiff organs and they can move around. And he is not in the mood to mess with anybody right now. Get, leave. <laughs> this, is a, this is an animal that is not in a good mood. Okay, and uh, if horses decide you aren't the leader, you're in trouble. Okay, here's some other really simple things about, you know, the box, right? Basic, this is your basic boxo horse. A horse's body is really basically a box, okay? And these are your, your, your really basic line here. From up here on the chest to back to the point of the buttocks, and from the withers down to the hoof, the you know, golden means right there is going to be the same distance. It's going to be longer if it's a Morgan. There's going to be different kinds of changes in it, but that's basic, okay? So you're not going to get all confused about, you know, if you got an awful take, he's real long, this guy's got a weird neck, okay? 
But that's, that's really basic to the, to the boxiness of a horse. Now we get into the fun stuff here. And why people often get into uh, trouble with drawing horses. Um, they, they think that horse limbs are like our limbs. They are, they're just in different places. You'll see it in the Book of Cowboys. It's really beautifully done. Their shoulder is basically where our shoulder is. You can see the front leg here, right? But when you get down to here, their elbow is up inside their body. You know, it's right up there against the body. When you get down to, uh, so it's up here. This front leg here, that's, a, that's where we would have the wrist. It's a very square item, okay? And as you go down into here, you start to get the smaller and smaller bones, and they are literally standing on a fingernail. And that's a horrifying thought. If you ever see a horse running on a hard surface like a city, it's like I've seen people run horses on asphalt streets and things, and you're just going, because you can see them doing this, because it hurts. No, don't do that. But does this make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, just remember, there's, there's the horse's toenail. This is the front leg here. This is why you get that square joint. The elbow's up here, all right? And so you get the, the, the shoulder muscles and bones are in like this. So they're all, they're all kind of, all this part of the body is bunched up in the body. Because a horse, and they don't have any of this. They have no lateral, all right? They are made to go that way, up to 40 miles an hour. And they can back up a little bit, but they're made to go straight forward. They're not made to do this. They're not made to climb. They're made to run. Okay, and they can, uh, they've got great power. And again, when we get down to the human, I mean, animals are all the same bones, okay? They just really are. Eat a chicken and you'll be, you'll, you'll be set. Again, we have the point of the buttocks here. Their knee is up inside their body, very close inside their body. It's not going to be hanging out halfway into the air. And then this is their heel. And again, they're up. They're toenails. You know, they're running like a ballerina on fingernails and toenails. And uh, this leg is so powerful. It runs, it, it comes off the top joint. And when they do a kick, they have measured that kick. It destroyed the machine they were kicking with. Um, a horse releases as much energy in a kick as an exploding hand grenade. It can kick your head off literally. Don't get behind a horse. Unless they know you're coming in, even then. Ah, perspective. People asked about this. Okay. You, a great one to, to, walk, to look at is the Remington paintings and all those old you know, cowboy paintings. Because you see on this horse, you've got a leg that's coming far farther. farther. You can see this hoof looks bigger. And then this, this is the front leg up here. Okay. And they are, you can see that any kind of hoof is going to be farther to the rear. And they're, they have a narrow, they look very narrow from the front. The, um, when the nose is pointed toward you, that nose and muzzle is going to look much bigger. Okay? Same thing going back from the rear. All right? um, they can have like a 20 foot stride. All right? And so the rear hoof is going to look really big and the front one's going to be stuck way out here. And if you ever want to have a 20 foot stride, and I've done this at the trot, I've never done it at a full gallop. This was how the Scots beat the Claymore. The Claymore is not a human battle weapon. It is made to stop the tanks of the 19th or the 18th century, which is the horse. And those big, they just stand there and you can cut a horse in half with them. You can cut the rider in half. However, if you've got a guy who's holding onto the stirrup leather and running at the speed of the horse because that gives you the 20 foot stride, well, he might be able to kill your master, but you're going to come in with that little dirk at the full speed of a horse. This is, this is what the Scots used to defeat the Claymore was one man with a dirk at the speed of a horse, which kind of made the guys at the Claymores get out of the way when they saw him coming. Because you cannot swing that thing back in time. They will kill you. All right, that's a... Okay, well, have we got the centaur so soon? Um, okay, this is the quick centaur thing, all right? Uh, the centaur, the quick centaur trick here is a lot of people get where the horse's body connects to the, the human wrong. They get the size wrong. You know, the shoulders and the human pelvic bone right here, match them up perfectly, bingo. You've got them for balance, you've got them for size, everything. There's a little bit of a fakery you've got to do here, which we're not built the same. Horses have a tendency, the neck is narrower this way. We're wider this way, so anytime you see any kind of animation or any kind of, of cartooning or anything, CGI, you're going to have to fake it, because we're just not built that way. 
It's going to have to come in on. Okay? You can pretend. Um, Carlos Speed McNeil, uh, who does Finder, pointed out one time that my centaurs, when one of them gets startled, like Stintz here, when he flips backwards from his front legs like a startled horse, a human would fall over backwards. Now, all you girls remember playing horses, okay? When you were both the rider and the horse. Just keep that in mind. Okay. I'm doing this real quick because I don't know how much time I have on the little camera there. Okay, uh, relative is uh, of the horse. And can you see this? Can you get, can you, uh, it's, it's pretty pretty. Okay, it's we got the rhino, the taper, and the donkey, and the zebra, and things like this. But the rhino is actually a horse relative. You can see it with the little horse ears. Okay, they have a long kind of horse-like face. Um, if you ever see the movie The Crudes, everything in it's got tusks. Because there was a point when the mammals were experimenting where everything had tusks and horns, including the horse family. You know? And to this day, some of the deer still have tusks. So you get this little, you know, tail here going on. Which, um, and again, you've got legs that are more like a horse than like an elephant, because you've got the same kind of little layout here, right? Oh, and there's also that same, you know, situation where you try to trunk out. The taper still got one. You got little bits of, uh, you know. But if you look at these animals, they're horses, all right? Okay. And you can actually see the taper. It looks like it's partway through that development of having, you know, more toes. It's got three in the front and two in the back, or how the heck that goes. You have to count them. You know, there's several different kinds of tapers. At one point, the Chinese were reporting that we have an animal with the face of an elephant and the body of a rhino, and it's got the hooves of a camel. Blah blah blah. And it's, they were all reporting on it. And the Chinese are going, "It's a taper. It's a taper." Yep, 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 yep. They had to pull out a joke on the local newspaper. And then the donkey, of course, again, is the horse with you know, very long ears, that kind of thing. It's the same kind of thing. And the horses, again, the business with the horse tail, and I'm doing this real quick and dirty for the um, panel, for the film, so we can see it. The, the whole thing, you know, yes, it's legitimate when you're doing pencil, and just do a quick, you know, scribble a pencil in there, and then you get the horse in there. I don't, I don't um, think time is really an issue on the tape. So mm -hmm. I don't think time is that a big issue on the tape. So okay. He's slow down. <laughs> All right. I'm just getting this in real quick. So, okay. The other thing is uh, that I don't think I mentioned at this point was the horse's tail. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the horse's tail is an extension of, you know, their spine. Okay. And it's more like a dog's tail. And then the hair hangs off it. Mm. Okay. It's on there. And if the tail comes up like that, it flips the hair around. So you can always get you know a mop on the stick, then you can kind of get an idea of how it goes. Okay. All right. Oh, writing. Yeah, this is always fun. Try and make sure somebody sits on a horse right. Hmm. Okay. I got the horses. Uh, this is uh, the bit, and a horse goes in the in the bit hole there. I do not know why everybody draws a horse wearing hackamore. They have no bit. You know? Because you can put a bit in a horse. That's where the bit goes. Okay. So here's the horse and the rider. And as a, I'm not a real rider. I kind of get, I'll, I'll get on any horse you give me any which way. Sit on it backwards. I don't care. Uh, but a real rider can tell you that the there's like a string, okay, and it's head, head butt heel. All right. That's that's where that goes. And so you got to get those to line up. All right. So. Um, one of the funniest bits of writing I've ever seen was Peter O'Toole, and uh, he was playing a Roman general in some series, I can't remember which one, you probably know it, uh, and he was writing bareback. Now, right, well, writing bareback is fine, but you, you ride bareback, you grip with your thighs, and you let your feet kind of, you know, they get their pointed, kind of like this. He was trying to ride like he was in stirrups. So here he is, bareback, like this. He was simply trying to ride like he had stirrups. Somebody didn't, you know, get that one right. Um, okay. This is not a pacer. This is a normal horse where they have oblique, you know, the legs move like this, like we do. You know, unless you get a natural pacer in which they run like this. Looks like a camel, but it's faster than a trot. I have seen a natural pacer. 
and uh, they're worth a lot of money because they're actually faster. You wouldn't think that a horse that runs like this would be faster, but they are. Okay. Um, also, people, when you're drawing somebody on a horse, a horse has that big old, you know, they look slender and gorgeous from the side, but they've got this big old burner gut because they're eating roughage and they're fermenting it down there, you know, like a big old ankylosaur or something or whatever those are. And so your legs are going to go out like this. And I know people come up to me and say, oh, my horse is very narrow. There's no such thing as a narrow horse. I mean, they're just not, they're not like dogs, okay? And so your legs are going to be like this, kind of, right? And so you get your old cowboy, who, and I'm drawing it fast again, with his, you know, he didn't bother to sew off his pants, which is why John Wayne always looks like that. That's a bachelor buying pants, okay? And they got the bowed legs, you know, and they walk kind of funny because they've been sitting on horses since they were kids, and uh, they still do it, which is why they want the bison to come back so they can have their horses back to heck with the jeeps and the helicopters. And, you know, that's why they walk like that, because after a while, it deforms your bones. So, um, oh my god, I run out of things to tell you. Anyway, if you want me to draw some more of these better, I just want to get through the whole story real quick. Now, questions, problems, what do you got? Okay, well, I'll turn to some of the books. You know, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Um, this is probably the best horse color book I've ever seen, and it is beautiful oil paintings. And it is about the microscopic color of horses. And really, there's no real way you can get these gorgeous shines down right except to go and draw horses. My sister, when, when I was a kid, she wanted me to do very carefully done versions of photographs of horses. So I did like 20 or 30 of them. When I was done, I knew how to draw a horse's shine. I don't care what you look like, okay? And they've got, the shine is as you can see, there's certain forms that stay the same. You've got to kind of know how these work. Nothing replaces looking at horses, watching them move. And today's artist has got a fabulous resource, which is YouTube. You can, you can draw from it, and you can stop it. And it's just the best way of drawing a horse is to... But now you, you can now, at least, that you... I mean, do you understand fetlocks and things like this? Like the fact that you've got an extra joint here, it's not just a paw or something. So now you would not be the kind of person who went off and drew... Because I have seen some gorgeous books, wonderful books that get awards and everything, and everything's gorgeous, everything in them, except the horses. And you're going, why not the horses? And somebody keeps, well, I shouldn't say they're not easy, they're not uh, hard to draw because it took me decades and decades. So, yeah, but if I can pass on any, any kind of little notes or anything like this. Um, is there anything in there that's not showing up so well that maybe we need a better drawing of it or anything? How are we looking? Um, what do we do here? I did that in about 15 minutes. <laughs> Um, okay, there's going to be enough panels today, and of course, we, people don't want to hang three hours on YouTube, and that's basically what this is for. I'll go farther if people want me to, but if not, that's how to draw a horse, and you can always ask me, you know, Donna Bard Hotmail, and ask me questions, I'll be happy to help out. Yes. But other than that, go look at them and fall off them a bunch of times, and if they've got their ears back, just get out of the pasture, okay? And, and thanks to Roberta Gregory for Skeletor over here. Yes, uh, her name is Misty. Misty, okay. Misty, okay, this is lovely Misty, standing in as Skeletor since it is a con. All right, all right. Yeah. Doing, doing a little uh, cosplay there. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> she, she's in her place, so. Okay. Uh, somebody said they could do a great horse noise. Who was, who was that? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> Well, we can all do one. Let's go ahead. <laughs> now look out here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, we all know how to do that. So that's how you draw horses. I know. Thank you.